In this lesson, we're going to get a basic understanding of how to use terrains inside of View Extreme. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin by creating just a standard terrain inside of our viewport. So you'll notice that we have two different terrains. We have the standard terrain and we have our procedural. But most importantly, we have double action icons on these terrain buttons. So that means that we can left click or right click on this and get different outcomes here. So if I left click on my standard height field terrain, that will actually create it in our view. So let me come back in my camera view here and we can actually see this terrain here. Okay. Just kind of panning that across. There we go. We've got a standard terrain built in our scene. Now, our terrains can be manipulated using our transform tools, our move, our rotate, and our scale. So let's go ahead and move into one of our orthographic views. And you'll see that we get this little toolbox that pops up here. Now, this toolbox gives us all of our different transformation gizmos. So we have our move gizmo, rotation gizmo, and then scale. Okay. Now we also have the coordinate systems uh, that are available to us. So we have um, our actual parent, local, global, and view. Okay. So if we wanted to actually rotate or scale in the local direction, we could simply click on L and then make sure we have our scale tool enabled here. Okay. So let's go ahead and just uh, move these terrains around. So you can move these in the X, Y, or Z on their own axis. Okay. And nothing's wrong with that. Now one thing that I do want you to notice is that as you move this terrain up and down, if it comes below the ground plane, it will actually clip it off. Okay. So if I hit Control Z one time, I'm going to zoom out in my camera view here. And you'll see that it kind of looks square on the edges. So if I pull that down a little bit, you'll see how that drops below that clipping plane or ground plane and it appears as if it's just kind of flowing into that. Okay. So now that I have this terrain okay, set up here, we can scale this up or down if we need to. So if I scale it up in my Z direction, you'll notice that the tops of the mountain become a little more jagged. Okay. So you want to be very careful of that because the standard height field doesn't necessarily update any detail. So if we take this up too high, the tops will get very jagged and it's going to look a little off. We could scale it down and make it a little flatter as well. So if it's not necessarily a mountain, let's say that it's just an island and we want to put trees across this, we'd want to scale it down to be a little more flat. Okay. So now we have kind of like a little beach golf area here. Now, with all of that, we can move, rotate, and scale our terrains. Nothing wrong with that. Now, I want to talk about actually uh, duplicating terrains. So let's say that we were creating some sort of mountain type scene here. I want to scale that up just a little bit. And I want to create mountains off in the background. Now, I could actually duplicate this mountain itself. So let's go to our Move tool. And in our top view, I'm going to zoom out. And I'm going to hold down Alt on my keyboard and we're going to move this terrain over and that will actually duplicate that. So let's go ahead and put this off in this position here and they can clip through one another, nothing wrong with that. Hold down Alt again and let's put another mountain range kind of off in the background here and we'll continue to duplicate this. I'm going to put one right here and you can see here in our preview that you can kind of see these mountains in the background. Let's put one more in here just to kind of cover up that that one area. Okay. Now let's go ahead and preview this inside of our main camera. Now we can see a preview right here in our camera control section of our scene information browser. But we can actually do a quick preview render right here in the camera. So click on this render, do a left click, and that'll create a very quick preview of what this will look like. Now there are no materials or anything like that, just our atmosphere and the scene. So we're not going to get really dynamic with this. Now we're talking about uh, the standard height field terrains and we're not going to get into editing them just yet. 
the next thing that I want to talk about is actually the procedural terrains and to start discussing what the difference is between standard and procedural is. So let's hold down shift and let's select these other terrains and sometimes it might be a little hard to select these because it actually doesn't allow you to select something that's inside the bounding box. It doesn't actually see that object. So we'll select this one, we'll hold down shift and we'll continue all the way around like this. Okay. So if I try to deselect something inside of here, it's not going to allow it because it's inside that bounding box. That's something that you want to be careful of. So let's hit delete and now all of that terrain's gone. Now let's go ahead and create a procedural. So let's just hit our left mouse button and create a procedural terrain. Now you might notice a little bit of a difference in this terrain compared to our standard terrain. You'll see that we have quite a bit more geometry right here on this terrain. And as we zoom in further and further, you'll see that we get more and more detail as we zoom in on this terrain. Now we're quite underneath it now, so we're not going to see anything. Let's go ahead and pan up here. And if we continue to zoom in, more and more detail is going to be put into this terrain. Okay, So that's the main difference between standard and procedural terrain. Now because it does add more and more detail, this is going to take just a little bit longer uh, to render and it's going to cause a little bit more performance issues. Okay, So you want to be pretty careful with that. Now it's not going to be anything that you'll notice because Vue does handle it fairly well. Okay, so let's get in here and we can create terrain or um, modify our terrain, procedural terrain, just like we did with our standard terrain. We can move it around, we can rotate it if we need to. Okay, that can be done. And we can even scale it. Okay, scale it up, make it a little taller. Now you'll notice that we really don't get any jagged edges here. What we get is that really nice um, additive detail. Uh, because of our procedural terrain here. Okay, So if you want to scale these mountains up and you want to get them really tall, this is a great way to do so. Okay, Notice how it just adds more and more detail um, as it procedurally gets larger. Okay, Now, we could also go ahead and we could duplicate these terrains and we could put more in the background if we need to, but I just wanted to just discuss the basics of terrain with you just to discuss what standard and procedural terrains are. Now what we're going to do in our next lesson is we're going to take a look at the terrain editor and we're going to take some time to really kind of dive in and take a look at some of those tools, some of the major tools and how we can edit these uh, terrains to what we want for our own specific uh, projects. So I'll see you then.